Well, we're back with uh, Bruce Firestone once again, and we got a couple more questions here to Great. lighten your day. So, yeah. Bruce, I got another yeah. question here. Along the way, in our journey of life, in our business life, networking, right. we've all made mistakes. Oh, yeah. Have you? Can you tell us a couple of top mistakes that you've made that you've learned by, and you can uh, re uh, explain to other people, you know, how to avoid them, maybe? Right. Well, I, I think. Um, uh, a mistake I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is that they do a wonderful job taking care of their business and a horrible job taking care of themselves. And w what I've learned is that you need to, to do both. So if I were to go back in time and whisper in the ear of that 39-year-old Bruce Farson, that was the year uh, that we got the National Hockey League franchise for Ottawa, the Ottawa Senators, and that would have been 1990. What I would have said to that young man is you have a real estate portfolio made up of 28 uh, townhomes that you and your wife own. And those 28 townhomes produced about $3,000 a month in uh, net operating income. We used to use them, they were pr called presidential executive travel apartments. So this is kind of Airbnb before there was Airbnb. Yes. <laughs> and they produced about $3,000 a month in net operating income and executives would come, they were visiting a tech company or they were working for the government, they would book these things, you know, they were nicely furnished, they had phone, they had cable television. In those days they didn't have internet, there was no internet, but, it, you know, they were fully functional and quite nice and they would pay $100 a night to stay there. They would have spent probably $150 on a hotel room, but they got a one or a two bedroom unit fully furnished, you know, with a nice kitchen and whatever else. And so if you're staying in Ottawa for a month or three months or six months on assignment, it's a heck of a lot nicer to stay in those units than it was to say stay in a hotel room for one or two or three months. So if you think about that, Keith, those 28 units were probably producing, say, after you pay some expenses, maybe $2,000 a month each, which is about $56,000 a month in income. Yes. And I mentioned in one of the earlier videos that we did that the average Canada pension plan payout in 2016 was $550 a month. It's hard to live on $550 a month. So the one thing I would have said to Bruce Firestone, that 39-year-old, is look, you have that presidential executive travel department portfolio. Keep that separate from the business. So that when you're an old guy like I am now, you're going to have you know fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollars a month in income, which buys a lot of um, donuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and you know so you'll have some retirement income because most Canadians, about eighty percent of Canadians and about eighty-two percent of Americans don't have a retirement act. But that's not what I did. I commingled personal assets and company assets. It all went into one pot. And unfortunately, when the senators went bankrupt. I think uh, when Mr. Bryden uh, filed for uh, uh, the, the proposal for that uh, company and, and, and for the hockey team, I think there were $485 million in liabilities and something like $650,000 in assets. So not very much was left, you can imagine. So I had to go back to school, as I mentioned earlier, retrain myself and start my life over again at 54, 55 years of age. For people who are listening to this video or watching this video, what I would say to you is, Take care of your business, but also take care of yourself. Well, thank you. One more last question. Okay. Uh, a lot of people in business, they right. Uh, if, like a lot of people say you should build it to sell it. What advice would you give me if and when I'm ready to sell my business? Right. Well, that's a great question. And in actual fact, what I do is I tell people uh, not to sell. And they're always surprised when I come up with that advice. You know, I am a real estate broker, so I'll, I'll be invited over to your house. I'll meet you and Lisa, and we'll say, well, you have a nice house here in Blackburn uh, Hamlet. Uh, and uh, you might say to me, well, we want to sell it because we want to downsize or whatever. And I might say to you, well, Keith and Lisa, why sell that, right? Why not keep it? Well, because, you know, we'd like to pull some money out and go on a trip or whatever. So what I tell a lot of people is, look, don't sell it. You know, maybe put a basement apartment in and rent it out. And if you want a little bit of disposable cash, you can refinance because you don't have a mortgage on You can refinance it, take a little bit of money out. It's tax-free. There's no income tax, no capital gains. It's just finance. And then you can go on a nice trip, right? Or you can spend it to buy something else if you want. Keep these properties. That's what the richest families in Canada, the United Kingdom, in Australia, in South America, in the United States have been doing since at least 1740 when the first Duke of Westminster started uh, his development or their development, the family's development in um, central London. 
and today the uh, seventh Duke of Westminster has to make do somehow with 14,500 US dollars an hour in income. That's about 125 or 128 million dollars a year. So it's a great strategy. And even businesses, what I'm trying to see people do, if they can, is pass them on to the next generation and the next generation to become what I call an equity lord. They're on the seventh Duke of Westminster, and you too can become an equity lord, Keith and Lisa, and pass on your properties, maybe pass on the businesses too. But if you want to sell something, whatever it is, we know that what you have to do is you have to make it in pristine condition, it has to look good, it has to be well branded, and you have to reduce your expenses and increase your income and increase your profitability if you want to sell it. So if you want to sell it, you can tart it up and uh, boost the income and find people who are willing to take a business or a property off your hands. But my advice is at least to consider keeping it. Thank you, Bruce. It's been a pleasure uh, to get to focus on your insights and what you're all about. And uh, I hope uh, I wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much.